Hello and welcome to another video where I'll try and take a very unprofessional deep dive into the data Paul, Sergeant Paul, Trooper Paul, whatever his name was, presented in court Friday, which in his professional opinion after 120 hours crash course clearly shows Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe with 24.2 miles per hour did a steering wheel correction and then continued driving. Earlier this morning, I was recording my Google measurement video saying, how long would it have taken Karen Reed to stop after the impact? Because when we watched this uh, data set that we were given, we can see the car didn't come to a stop. It continued. So I did a... Uh, a fantasy version of it. And uh, in my unprofessional opinion, at least she would have hit Higgins' car if it was placed where they claimed. But this video was because I kept thinking about that correction. I talked about it earlier in my video. It could be a pothole. It could be something because it's not that big of a a, a swing on a, on a wheel. But how how big would it be? How could I visualize it? And then I thought the only round thing I really have in my house that might be able to visualize it is a clock. My clock is a little bigger, a little smaller than my steering wheel in my car. I don't know the size of a Lexus, but just again, in your head, visualize a clock when I talk about this. And uh, then I will try to Focus on this part, which they brought forward and said, this is where you can see she hits John O'Keefe. She has her acceleration to the maximum of 24.2 miles per hour, then a slight deceleration over the next two frames. She has a 18 degree, 4.5 uh, left, 4.5 right, 4.5 left angle it's that correction this man claims is a clear indicator that she hit john o'keefe everyone who uh, used to go to school probably uh, know all about these ones where you have to measure degrees and if we are uh, to try and figure out how much did she move her steering wheel? This is five degree left. This is five degree right. I can't make it any clearer than that because the tools don't work. I'm not good at graphics. But this is the distance she moves it right and then back left on a ruler. Just just to show, this is 10 degrees, the other one is 9 degrees. But this is the amount. But what if you put back in your head the clock? How much would I have to turn the clock to make those 10 degrees? Well, then we can look at a, a clock. A clock is 360 degrees. But as we all know, there's 60 minutes in one hour. So every minute marker represents 360 divided by 6. So this one minute right here and this one minute right here on your clock you have in your house if you still have an analog clock would both represent six degrees to either side, which would make this span 12 degrees. So the amount she moves her steering wheel is less than from one minute two to one minute over to one, back to one minute two. I don't know how you drive your car that's that's this much 
It's it's nothing. Uh, again, they're claiming she's gunning at 24.2 miles per hour, having her steering wheel slightly to the left, then slightly to the right, slightly to the left. And again, any analog clock you have in the house, it would be less than between the minute marker before 12 and the minute marker after 12. The distance she corrects. I know he said there was an impact. You can see her steering uh, wheel move. But again, if I, a stupid baker, with the help of a picture of a clock, can make this seem kind of like nothing, in my opinion. They're claiming she slams into 217 pounds, sent him spinning around while flipping around fl while flying through the air, hitting him center mass. That car bumps into 217 pounds at a speed of 24.2 miles per hour, sending him flying. And the amount the steering wheel moves is roughly this times two. In your opinion, if Alan Jackson showed you what I just showed you Monday, would you believe the data he told us showed a clear impact these nine degrees change on the steering wheel does that in any reasonable way indicate she hit 217 pounds sent him flying still magically without breaking a bone in his body breaking the tail light with his arm leaving no marks all the scratch marks that's now not abrasions but lacerations common logic in my opinion does not tell me this indicates karen reed hit someone at 24.2 miles per hour in reverse bumped him so much her Go out, take a drive, find a pothole. I've been to Tennessee. You have a lot of them. Drive over that. Your steering wheel will move more that, than this amount of space. And this is this is way more than nine degrees. If I can find reasonable doubt in this, how is the defense gonna spank? Sergeant Paul on the stand, Trooper Paul, whatever his name is. This will be worse than Proctor because this guy is the data guy. This is the hard science. And the hard science says this is the amount her steering wheel moved. Less than one minute to and one minute over 12 on your analog clock in your house. And yeah, you can put it up smaller, bigger, however much your steering wheel is. But again, I can't wait till Monday if they have anything to show this because no one in the jury would believe 217 pounds sideswiped made this much motion on your steering wheel. Go out, hit a pothole with less speed than that. Hit a speed bump you will have a bigger steering correction. But again, what do I know? I'm just a baker using Google, trying to make sense of data. Funny enough, they never provide any visualization of how much it is, because if you see this amount is what her steering wheel moved, anyone should say, that doesn't make sense. Have to wait tomorrow till tomorrow to figure out what uh, is going to happen. But think about it. I showed you the distance in the earlier video. Now I showed you how much the steering wheel moved. Do you still believe she slammed into a 20, uh, 217 pound person 
and that was all her car had to react to it. I don't. <laughs>